Okay, so in the previous video, um, our first on applications of differentiation, we looked at uh, problems involving rates of change. Um, and today we want to look at a specific example of rates of change, which is um, kinematics. So kinematics deals with um, three quantities associated with motion. So displacement, velocity and acceleration. Um, so let's just talk about these three um, quantities. Those of you that do, um, you know, physics or uh, specialist maths um, will have more significant experience um, in these ideas and you don't need to have a full understanding of the physics of them um, in mathematics, but just um, have a sense of what's going on here. So displacement is um, connected to distance, but it's not the same as distance. So displacement um, is the position of a particle relative to a fixed point. So it describes both the distance away from the point and also whether it is, we're only going to deal with simple motion in a straight line. So whether it is sort of to the right or the left of the point, or if we're looking at vertical motion, whether it's above or below the point. So it gives us a sense of both how far away from that fixed point um, uh, we are and then the direction um, in which uh, the object is located. So we usually use the letters X or S when we refer to displacement um, and displacement is described as a function of time so it's in terms of time so it'll be X of T or S of T. I will just caution you when working with your CAS about defining a function as X of T. Um, you just have to be really careful to then clear your variables afterwards because otherwise when you're solving another an equation involving X a little later on um, it'll be referring to the function X rather than just the letter X so just be a bit cautious about that it might be a good habit um, not to define a function as X of T using your CAS um, but on paper obviously we would still refer to it as X of T or sometimes S of T. I also don't like S because I find when I write S's they look a bit like five. So um, <laughs> yes, it's not an ideal choice of letters there. Um, so as I said, we're only going to deal with motion in a straight line. So pretty much either just horizontally, in which case we would define positive displacement as being to the right and negative displacement as being to the left, or vertically, in which case we would define positive displacement as being above and negative displacement as being uh, below. Um, but the question can define... Um, the direction of positive displacement differently if, if it needs to. Okay. All right, so then we get into our ideas of rates of change because velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. So how is the displacement changing with respect to the time? Okay, so it's the derivative of um, displacement. Um, so we usually use the letter V to refer, represent velocity. So velocity would be described also as a function of time. So how is the velocity changing over time? Um, or velocity in terms of time would be V of T. And then the, um, we should clarify instantaneous velocity, but um, that's implied when we talk about velocity, um, would be the derivative of the velocity function. If we wanted average velocity, we've talked about the difference between instantaneous rate of change um, versus average rate of change in the previous video, um, and also prior to that. Um, average velocity would be, it's essentially gradient of a straight line. It is the, but we need to be careful about the fact that velocity is change in displacement over change in time. It's how the displacement is changing over time. So a lot of um, this will be a really common error. You'll you'll go to find average velocity and you'll subtract two velocities and divide them by two times. But if you're doing velocity over time, that is acceleration, not average velocity. Okay, so average velocity is the change in displacement over the change in time. So if we have positive velocity, that indicates that the particle is traveling in a positive direction. So velocity is connected to speed. Um, the magnitude, so ignoring the positive or negative um, of the velocity will, t will tell us about the speed. Um, but if we have positive velocity, it means we're traveling in a positive direction. So that depends on how your positive displacement is defined. Uh, negative velocity indicates that the particle is traveling in a negative direction. So it's going backwards. Um, and zero velocity obviously indicates that the particle is traveling in neither direction. And that means that it's stationary at that point. And often a phrase you'll see in, in questions will be um, suggesting that the particle is at rest at that point, meaning it's momentarily stopped. No, and often that happens um, because the particle's turning around, so it's moving with positive velocity, then for a moment it's at rest or stationary before it then um, travels with negative velocity as it turns around. Um, speed is an indication of the size or the magnitude of velocity. So speed is, um, and these vertical lines that we've got drawn here are called sometimes the absolute value or the modulus of the velocity. Um, and so if you just basically ignore the negative, if it's negative, you ignore it. If it's positive, it stays positive. Um, 
so it's the absolute value of the velocity um, and speed the definition definition of speed doesn't change from what we already know it is the distance traveled over the time so sometimes you need to think carefully about that um, distance traveled doesn't always correspond to displacement directly so you need to think carefully about what's happening in your problem um, it should also be noted that average speed is not simply the magnitude of average velocity Okay, and that's to do with the fact that distance travelled is not just the magnitude of um, displacement. So we'll have a look at some examples where we look at that. And then the third quantity we're dealing with here is acceleration. And acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. Okay, So the letter A is usually rep used to represent velocity, which could be described as a function of time. So A of T, the instantaneous velocity, uh, sorry, the instantaneous acceleration at any time T is... Um, obviously the derivative of the velocity, it's the rate of change of velocity. And if we want average acceleration, it would be change in velocity over change in time. So subtracting two velocities divided by um, the difference between two times. If a particle is traveling away from O, then positive acceleration indicates that it's speeding up. But if the particle is traveling, um, uh, and if the particle is traveling away from O, then negative acceleration indicates that it's slowing down. Um, zero acceleration indicates that a particle is neither speeding up nor slowing down um, and that is that it's traveling with constant velocity. Okay. Um, I wouldn't get too bogged down in acceleration, we probably don't deal too much in acceleration, um, but obviously the key idea is that it is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. It's worth then noting, and we actually have notation for this, so if we wanted to talk about the acceleration in terms of the displacement, um, we would need to differentiate the displacement twice in order to get to the acceleration. And we have a way to describe that. It's the double derivative of um, the displacement. And if we were to write it using Leibniz notation, it would be um, uh, d squared. What are we doing? Uh, differentiating the displacement. Okay. That would be how we would write the second derivative. So that would mean differentiate the displacement twice. So um, the key idea here is that you've got rates of change. So um, velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And so therefore, if we want to move down um, this hierarchy, we're going to need to differentiate to get from one step to the next. And therefore, if we want to move back up, we're going to need to anti-differentiate. So we'll revisit the idea of kinematics when we look at anti-differentiation um, in our next topic. OK, let's just work through an example. So a particle moves in a straight line so that its position, x metres, so that's displacement, okay, position. So its position, x metres, relative to a point O at time t seconds is given by um, this rule here, this quadratic rule, where t is bigger than or equal to zero. So t obviously representing time, um, so t has to be uh, bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so we want to find the initial position and velocity of the particle. Okay, so initial, thinking about what that means, so initial is going to be when t equals zero. So we want the initial position, so x of zero, so subbing t equals zero into our position equation, our displacement equation, would be zero squared minus eight times zero plus ten, so it is going to be ten. Now we're going to have units here, so the displacement is measured in metres according to the question. So the initial displacement is 10 metres. The fact that it's positive 10 metres means that it's 10 metres to the right of O. Um, it doesn't tell us whether we're going left or right or up or down, so without that instruction, um, you know, I just, you draw the diagram in a way that suits you. I would usually draw it horizontally, but you could equally get the same information and draw it on a negative line. Um, we also want to know the initial velocity, which means before we can find the initial velocity, we're going to need to find the velocity at any time t. So we know that velocity is going to be the derivative of displacement, and in this case that is 2t minus 8, and so therefore the initial velocity, subbing 0 into our velocity equation, tells us that the initial velocity is negative 8 metres per, and the time units are seconds. Okay, so the particle starts 10 metres to the right of O and it's moving with negative velocity, so that means it's coming back towards O. Okay. Part B, we want to find the acceleration of the particle at any time t. So we know acceleration in terms of t is um, the derivative of the velocity. And so in this case, that's derivative of 2t minus 8, and so it is 2. Units of acceleration are metres per second squared. Or sometimes that can also be written as 
meters per second squared, sorry, and this can also be written as meters per second, the negative one. It's just simply using division. It's just index laws. M divided by S can also be written as MS to the power of negative one. That's all. That's all it's saying. Um, scientists tend to like the negative powers. Um, I probably tend to still write meters per second squared. I think it's helpful to think about units of, um, you know, velocity divided by units of time or units of um, displacement divided by units of time when we're thinking about a rate of change. Okay, part C, find the position of the particle when it is at rest. Okay, so I mentioned this phrase just before. So it's at rest, suggesting the velocity must be zero. So we want to know, first of all, when is the velocity zero? So we're going to make the velocity equation equal to zero. So that is 2t minus 8 equals zero. So 2t equals 8, t is equal to 4. So after four seconds, the particle will be at rest. Its velocity will be zero. We want to know what is the position of the particle when it's at rest. So we now know it's at rest when t equals four, and we now want to know what is the position at that time. So x of four is going to be four squared minus eight times four plus 10. So that is 16 minus 32 plus 10. So that's negative 16 plus 10. So negative six meters, it's a displacement. So we're actually starting to get a picture of what's happening here, okay? Um, and we're going to need that picture when we get to part E. Um, so I might leave it till then to draw it, but we're getting a sense of where does the particle start, what's its initial velocity, what happens after four seconds, etc. Okay, part D, we want the average velocity of the particle in the first five seconds. Okay, so average velocity is change in displacement over change in time. It's a rate of change of... Um, displacement with respect to time. So you want the, the um, displacement after five seconds minus the displacement at the beginning over that change in time. Okay, so we already know um, x of zero, we worked that out in part A, that's 10. So I'm just going to work out x of five. I might just do that under here. x of five is going to be five squared minus eight times five my, uh, plus 10. So that's 25 minus 40, which is negative 15, plus 10, which is negative 5. So we're going to have negative 5 minus uh, the initial displacement, which is 10, um, over 5. So that's negative 15 over 5, which is negative 3. It's an average velocity, so it's metres per second. Okay, so on average, in the first five seconds, the velocity is negative three meters per second. That doesn't tell me a huge amount. It tells me um, if the average velocity is negative, it tells me that the particle spent, in the first five seconds, it spent more time traveling backwards than it did traveling forwards. Um, and the, the three, though, doesn't tell me a whole lot. The average, it's not an average speed. It's not saying that the average speed would be three meters per second. And that's where we need to be careful here with part E. So average speed we know, so average velocity is change in displacement over change in time. Average speed is distance over time. So we need to be able to work out the distance traveled in the first five seconds. And that is not the same as the displacement in the first five seconds. So we've actually got a clear picture of what's happening over the first five seconds. Let's just be clear about what's going on. So if we put um, point, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to work out one thing. Uh, yeah, if we put, uh, o, let's say here, our fixed point, we know that the particle started 10 meters at a displacement of positive 10 meters. So that's when t equals zero. And we know it started moving with negative velocity. Now we've also worked out in part C that there's only one time when the particle's at rest. Only one time when the particle turns around. Okay, And that is back here at negative six. That happens at negative six meters. It happens after four seconds when the particle is negative six um, as, at a displacement of negative six, okay? And then we want to go to the first five seconds, so we already worked out in part D that after five seconds, the displacement is at negative five. So that's the picture of the journey of what the particle did, okay? It started over here at 10, it moved backwards until negative six, and then it came back to five. Obviously, it just moves back and forth in a straight line, just drawn that um, 
sort of curved around so we can sort of see what's happening. So we can, from this picture that we've now illustrated of what happens in the first five seconds, we can calculate the distance. So when you're wanting to calculate the distance, if we just worked out the difference between the displacements, we would have done, it would have been that, and we would have found that it was 15 metres. But we missed the fact that it went further and came back by only thinking about the displacement. So you also, the key thing is to be able to work out any points where the particle turned around. So you wanna work out where's the velocity zero, even if it's not prompted in the questions. Does it, where did it turn around? Does, does it turn around in, the, in that first five seconds that I need to be careful of what's happening at that point? So we can see that the distance here is 10 meters to get back to O plus another six meters um, in the next, in the until t equals four, so that's 16 meters, and then another one meter back to five, so that's 17 meters in total. So the distance traveled is 17 meters. So just to be clear what I just did verbally then, so the distance is gonna be the 10 meters back to O plus another six meters, and then plus another one meter. So distance 17 over the time, five seconds. Um, so, you know, you can leave it as 17 on five. That's a fraction in simplest form. Um, that's also um, three and two fifths, so 3.4. And it's a speed, so meters per second, okay? So be really careful about the fact that it's not just about making the average velocity positive, okay? You actually have to separately calculate and work out what's happening with the distance. Okay, so there's some questions today to do from exercise um, 18F.